Hi guys, this has come up a few times for me recently. So I figured today I would make a video on how to properly export your Premiere project for audio post. Okay, so film people often edit in a program like Adobe Premiere Pro, blending together multiple layers of on-location audio and effects. They then hand off their edited picture, ideally a picture-locked version, to the audio post department to then mix the audio, adding fully sound effects and music and whatever else is needed. Here's the problem though. The film person is working in Premiere, but most audio people work in Pro Tools or any other DAW, but basically not Premiere. But as audio people, we still want those distinct tracks, automation, and other data to be separate and editable. So in order to make that transfer between programs, we often use something called an AAF file. There are also OMF files that do a similar thing, but AAF files are the newer standard and they contain more information. So that's what we're gonna be focusing on today. So what's an AAF file? Well, AAF stands for Advanced Authoring Format and it's designed for doing video post-production work. It's a way of sending complex multi-layered session or project data between different softwares. Today, I'm gonna to be focusing on how to export an AAF from Adobe Premiere Pro Creative Cloud specifically with the intent to import into Pro Tools. I'm running Pro Tools 11 currently with the current version of the Creative Cloud and because of that, there are some things that I will do simply because my version of Pro Tools is a bit finicky with AAF files, but I'll talk about that when we get to it. Basically, if you have Pro Tools 12, it might be a little simpler for you and I'll explain how. So let's get started on this. Okay, so it's pretty simple. We're gonna start with your lovely, amazing, beautiful film that's picture locked and ready to go out to the sound post world. So I just opened up my last YouTube video to use as an example here. So here's what you do. You go to File, then Export, and then choose AAF. The AAF Export Settings dialog will appear on your screen. If your audio person is working in Pro Tools 11 like me, then they might have trouble importing the video image with all the other session data. So if that's the case, I'd recommend unchecking mixed down video and sending them the video file separately to link up after the AAF import. It's one extra step for them, but it's not too bad, and otherwise they might get an error message about not being able to do the AAF import at all because of missing media. If they're working in a newer version of Pro Tools than what I'm running, then my understanding is that they've fixed this bug and you should be able to check mix down video and include it in the file. I haven't double checked that yet for the purposes of this video though, so maybe you guys can tell me. Then what I recommend doing here to give the audio person a bit more control is checking off enable to break out to mono, which is not exactly what a sound person would want, but it then allows us to check off these next options. So then check off render audio clip effects and include clip copies without effects. What this does is it makes it so the audio person will receive one dry copy of any tracks with effects and one copy that includes the effects. That gives them more control since, for example, if you put some reverb or EQ on a track, they'll get one version of it without that reverb or EQ and one version with it. So they can then decide whether to use your effects or to put their own on there. It also gives them an idea of what you were going for without needing to commit to your exact version of the track. So then for sample rate, most film people work in 48K and that's the standard for film audio. So I'll usually leave it at that. Then I recommend upping the bit depth to 24, especially if that's what your original audio is in because that gives you a better dynamic range. Then I recommend choosing embed audio since it then includes the audio files in the AAF file. It will make your file size larger than if you choose separate audio, but hey, they need the audio files to work with them, so there's that. It's also just easier. Even if they have the audio files already, including them in the AAF to import is easier than making them separate so the audio person has to relink them. But if the file size for transfer is a huge concern, you can have them be separate and send those files separately. Then I recommend switching the format from AIFF to Broadcast Wave. Both file types are high quality and it will mostly depend on what your sound person prefers, but I've noticed that most audio people in studios seem to work in WAVE. Then I would just stick with copy complete audio files for the next option. Again, it makes the file size bigger for transfer, but it gives your audio person more control over the session. Basically, if you cut an audio file in half and then deleted half, they can then drag out the audio file to see what you cut out and make a decision about where that cut should go with this option. Whereas if you choose trim audio files, they would not have that option. And that's it. Hit OK, choose a place to save it, and you're done with the export. It might then show you a log for how the export went and you're all good to go. Just send that AAF file over to the audio person and hope for the best. Okay, so that video took a bit longer than expected, so I'm gonna show you how to import an AAF into Pro Tools in another video. It's pretty simple though. So I hope you guys liked this video and please let me know what you think in the comments below. For today's question, I wanna know, do you have any tips for us for post-production audio? Please leave your answers in the comments below.
So thanks guys. As usual, if you like this video, please hit the little like button, share the video, subscribe to my channel, or check out my Patreon. I'll be coming out with new videos every other Wednesday, and thanks for watching. Okay.